Very good morning and welcome to Kusili Breakfast. Shosik Vusil Naolo Sanza Kusi Vulela. This video looks will be speaking to UN Resident Coordinator, Mr. George Owashiro on the show. In December 2023, the UDHR will be 75 years old. And in this regard, the United Nations family led by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, its technical agency for human rights, is launching a year-long campaign to promote and recognize the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of of human rights. I'm joined by the UNRC resident coordinator, Mr. George Washira, uh, on in the studio today to talk more about this campaign and the Human Rights Day commemoration. Good morning and welcome, Mr. George. Thank you so much uh, for waking up uh, today and uh, joining us in the studio. Um, just before we talk more about the campaign, just you know, just give us a brief background on the Declaration of Human Rights Day. Good morning, Lolo Kusile uh, Emaswati. Uh, very happy to be here this morning to talk about the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights, uh, which, as you have indicated, is turning 75 years uh, on 10th of December. Mm -hmm. So we are using this period to celebrate uh, this declaration and also launching uh, a campaign that is going to last the whole year up until 10 December 2023, mm -hmm where we will be using the opportunity to, number one, educate uh, the people uh, around us about the importance of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. Number two, promote uh, increased uh, awareness uh, about uh, the, the indivisibility of human rights uh, as uh, contained in the uh, declaration. And then um, uh, finally to ensure that uh, we are empowering the people for whom this declaration was made to continuously be able to claim uh, their rights as a people. So the declaration was uh, uh, birthed out of the frustrations and the horrors of the uh, Second World War. Mm -hmm. And you will know that was an absolutely devastating war where millions of lives were, were lost. And the UN uh, member states got together and decided it was time to come up with very, very clear guidelines about uh, human rights around the world. So since then, it has become our moral compass. It is our guide in terms of the values of humanity, the values that we must all uphold. And in fact, every time that there has been major calamities in terms of war, it's because humanity from time to time has departed from those uh, universal values. So the declaration uh, is indeed an affirmation that we have to uphold these humanity values that are at core are about justice, dignity, uh, inequality for all. All right. Um, as you've just said, Mr. Washria, that you know this declaration was made over seven decades ago, yes. and it's, uh, human rights are a very important aspect of life. You know, yeah. we've been commemorating this day for seventy-five years now. Uh, what is its significance? You know, globally, regionally, and of course in the Kingdom of Eswatini. Yes. Now, um, a part of what uh, we 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 do and recognize as 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 the UN. Uh, we come here to support uh, a member state, an important member state, uh, the Kingdom of Eswatini, when we have two legs in terms of our mandate. One leg is to support the development aspirations of this country. So the things that you see us do, whether we are talking about uh, health, whether we are talking about employment, whether we are talking about agriculture, that's an important pillar in terms of the developmental mandate that we carry. But bringing this together is the other pillar, which is what we call the normative uh, 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 part of our mandate, which is to insist that in order for us to support a member state in terms of uh, its development mandate, we also have to bring uh, to bear all the international standards to do with, uh, with human rights, the commitment that the country has made in terms of uh, the, the human rights. And therefore, we cannot uh, pursue a development in a country without also recognizing 
that a lot of what goes wrong in many countries is when we depart from protecting and promoting the rights of people. So that idea that we have to always remember at the core of every activity, whether it's development, whether it's governance, the person, the human person is at the core, whether this is man, woman, child, regardless of faith, regardless of gender, regardless of age, regardless of even sexual orientation that we have to promote. So this becomes absolutely key in terms of how we move together in, towards this, uh, the uh, achievement of what we call during this period uh, the sustainable development goals. All right. So if I may ask uh, Mr. George, you know, uh, since that, since seeing that the declaration is being recognized globally, mm -hmm. um, has there been any changes, you know, in other parts of the world in terms of, you know, ensuring that human rights are met? Yes, um, uh, we, ha we have to say part of why we want to do this campaign uh, that has three uh, pillars uh, in terms of the next uh, one year, in terms of educating, uh, promoting a change of uh, attitude and also empowering people, is the recognition that we have come a long way. There has been this uh, sometimes skepticism, uh, skepticism about our human rights the same across generations, across geographical space, across social and economic uh, uh, divides. And what we want to emphasize, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter whether you are poor or rich. It doesn't ma matter which part of the world you come from. That the uh, requirements of human rights remain the same across uh, the, the world. So we have seen great progress in terms of the early days of the skepticism that somehow human rights can be relative, that depending on your culture, depending on where you come from, depending on economic status, that uh, you perhaps deserve more or less uh, uh, human rights. We have seen that progression. And I think one of the key achievements is when member states came together and agreed to form a mechanism through which member states themselves are able to check on each other, hold each other accountable through a peer review mechanism. This is what we call the universal uh, uh, periodic review. And I'm glad that the Kingdom of Eswatini is a key participant in this process where uh, the Kingdom goes and meets with other member states, presents its report about the progress it is making in human rights promotion, gets recommendations from member states, and then comes home and uh, continue the implementation. Our role um, in, in the UN is usually to support the member state, in this case, the Kingdom of Eswatini, in terms of the capacities to be able to defend and promote the human rights of its citizens. At the other level, we do uh, support uh, the, the citizens in terms of the, them being the, the rights uh, bearers the state is the duty bearer. It has the duty to protect, promote human rights. The citizens themselves are the right bearers and they have to know how to claim their rights and empower themselves so that we together, the duty bearer, the state and its institutions, mm -hmm. and the citizens as the duty bearers can work together to promote the bigger vision of justice, uh, equality and dignity for all. All right. So now I want us to talk about the right to education. Mm -hmm. um, so here in Eswatini government introduced free primary education just to ensure that all um, children attend school, all yeah. children go to school. But there's still some parts of Africa, African countries, that children still do not have that right. Yes. Um, most of them, you know, stay home. They yes. do not have an education. So what role is the UN playing, you know, to ensure that these children get their, their rights to education? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the, the, this, in fact, uh, the later this morning, um, uh, I'll be heading back to the UN House where we are doing the annual commemoration of Human Rights Day mm -hmm. today. And uh, the focus is Article 26, which is, as you say, is, is right to education. Mm -hmm. We recognize that any aspirations that we have in terms of progress in the world, we have to pay attention to the education 
that uh, children are getting and the right to education is absolutely key. Okay. It's a work in progress, as you say, across the continent mm -hmm. that not all nations have made the same progress in terms of the provision of education. What we do is to constantly, first of all, work with governments, in this case the Minister of Education, to ensure that we are putting the right policies in place, mm -hmm. including the allocation of resources to the education of our kids, checking to see that the education our children are getting is keeping in tune mm. with our changing world today. So um, I, I could mention, for example, last September, uh, on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly, the Secretary General of the United Nations convened what was called Transforming Education Summit. It's a huge recognition that two things have been happening in the recent past. Mm -hmm. Number one, because of COVID, we have lost uh, a lot in terms of years of education for, for our children. When those children, not just in this kingdom, but across the world, were staying at home because of the COVID lockdowns, a lot happened. There was violence against children. There was teenage pregnancies, kids dropped out of school. And one of the key questions that we were addressing in that summit, how do we ensure we recover from uh, the losses of COVID? The second key point is to recognize that the world has been changing. Today we say that our children are doing things that we didn't know existed when we were going to school. I, people my age, when we were going to school, today when I talk to my children, I don't understand what they do because the world has changed. The question is, has education, our education systems, including the philosophies underlying those education systems, have they changed to keep in tune with these changes in our world? So that's part of where our conversation is. And in order for us to make these adjustments, first of all, to recover from COVID, but also to ensure that our children are getting the right education, we have to align policies, the allocation of resources, uh, in order for, for us to progress in education. So right to education, absolutely, absolutely important. Yeah. All right. Um, another issue here, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. George, I think we should talk about is uh, the importance. I know that it's you, the UN's mandate to share the importance of the UDHR, especially to your stakeholders, mm -hmm. uh, women, the mm -hmm. youth, children, mm -hmm. and widows as well. So I just want to ask, um, what progress has the UN made um, in ensuring rights of widows? Because we've seen widows, you know, uh, suffering after their husbands die, children as mm -hmm. well. Uh, what progression has the UN made in that yeah. uh, aspect? Yeah. Uh, the beauty of the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights is that it has become the wellspring of all the other things that have happened in terms of conventions and agreements and treaties and so on. Mm -hmm. So one of the important uh, 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 conventions is what we call the Convention on the Elimination of or Forms of di Discrimination Against Women. So when you talk about widows, um, there is a whole convention developed to uh, promote protection of women, whether these are married women, uh, young women, or widows, and so on. And I do recognize that in many of our cultures, in, uh, unfortunately, in mostly here in Africa as well, okay. we have not paid adequate attention in terms of promotion of our women in all their aspects. So part of what we, we constantly do is to work with the, with the government, with the National Human uh, Rights uh, Commission and, uh, and Commission for Administration, uh, Public Administration mm -hmm. to ensure we are constantly promoting the rights of women. Recently, uh, we launched, actually last Friday, what we call 16 Days of Activism to End uh, Gender-Based Violence. Now, it's a recognition that within what you have mentioned in terms of the rights of widows, there is a whole broad spectrum there in terms of the kinds of discrimination, violence that our women are, um, are experiencing every day. This is not unique to Eswatini. It's a problem around our world. And until that day, 
that we shall recognize that women are part of an overwhelming majority. In many countries, we have more women than men, yet we have not reached a point mm -hmm. where we are equally concerned and creating opportunity, protection for our women. So widows, uh, women in all circumstances, is something we have to be concerned about. There is an association of widows um, uh, in this country, and I'm proud to say that my office and other agencies in this country have been working very, very closely uh, with this association of uh, widows to help pursue these agendas. And uh, part of what I want to commend the government for mm. is the, the, the work they are doing on the matrimonial uh, bill and uh, uh, matrimonial properties bill. Mm. And that will create a huge shift in terms of how we are addressing. So my warm congratulations to the government uh, for the efforts that uh, has, have been made in this country to okay. advance the rights of, uh, of women. All right. Um, we have about five minutes, uh, Mr. Washiria. So I just want to ask, I understand that today you have um, an activity, an event yes. at the UN headquarters uh, round table where mm -hmm. you will be uh, with stakeholders, the mm -hmm. private sector and individuals as well. Just tell us more about the, that activity today. Yeah. Um, today's activity is going to be focused on um, Article 26. And uh, before I get there, I want to, as a true African, I came bearing gifts. <laughs> Okay. So this is what we are talking about today. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is the Universal Declaration uh, on Human Rights, mm -hmm. um, the 30 articles in six uh, languages, the, the official languages of the United Nations. So if you look there, mm -hmm. Article 26 is uh, on right to education. Mm -hmm. So today we are going to be focused on uh, Article uh, 26, talking about the, the uh, right to education you will know that out of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, we now have the, the, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, mm -hmm. what we call CRC. The CRC then specifically addresses all the issues uh, in terms of the rights that we need to be promoting uh, towards the children. So it's going to be an interesting pro program. We have gone around the four regions of the country, okay. talked to children at uh, the uh, guidance of uh, UNICEF, which is our specialized uh, agency uh, on issues to do with uh, children. And we are going to be bringing those voices of children about what they are dealing with in terms of education, their rights in all aspects of life. They are going to be coming uh, into the room today with us this morning. Mm -hmm. We are happy we are going to have the Honorable Minister of Justice as our guest of honor. We are going to have uh, members of civil society we are going to have members of the private sector because this is a conversation that needs to be had across okay. uh, everyone. And we're going to be focused on that key question about how are we promoting the right to education? How are we supporting our children? Given what I've talked about, about what has happened during COVID and how we need to recover, but also looking forward okay. to check again, are we giving our children a good chance, a good opportunity in life in terms of the kind of education that we are uh, providing for them. Okay, so Mr. George, before I release you, what is your uh, key message? You know, what, what, what is the call to action? What role can we as individuals play to, you know, raise their awareness on human rights? Number one, that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is our moral compass. It's about the values of humanity. Each time humanity has departed from those values, we have had problems. Mm. We have to believe in the worth and dignity and justice and equality for everybody. So everywhere we go, let's always remember that everyone is born equal. They have rights, they have freedoms, they aspire to be equal and to have good life. Mm -hmm. And the declaration is about how we, we, we protect uh, our, our, our people. Number two, in terms of the duty bearers, institutions, government and institutions, how we continue to build our capacities and abilities to protect and promote human rights for our citizens. As citizens, rights bearers, how we become constantly aware of the rights, our rights, and how we constantly claim them 
it does not mean we have to always be out there fighting with government and institutions and so on. Mm -hmm. It's an awareness about we have rights. And the same rights that we have as individuals is the same that the next person has, regardless of their choices, regardless of their gender and age and so on. We all have rights. So let's step up there in confidence, knowing that we have a moral compass that we call the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It protects all of us. The moment we fail to protect one of us, we are failing to protect everybody else. All right. Thanks so much, Mr. George, for joining us today on the show. And finally, we'll definitely. the charter okay. of the United Nations, mm. the mother charter that gave us the, the Universal Declaration on all the other conven uh, convenants and uh, treaties that we are talking about. Thank you so much, Mr. George. Definitely we will read these. And I hope the rest of the general public can also get a hold of these yes, and indeed. read as well. Yes, yes. Thank indeed. you so much yes, for joining us. Mugeli, I was concerned Naye Lapa, UN Resident Coordinator, Mr. George Washira. Sikrima Gabandi Njeng, M7 Dilom Kuli Commemoration, Minyaga Ling, Mashumna Skombisa, and 75 years of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights Day. It is commemorated every year on the 10th of December. As part of the Magetis, I will Africa update. <laughs> Do you remember the spinning thing? This is us. This picture represents what we did. We were there when coronavirus wreaked havoc in our population. Together with other stakeholders, we formed the first line, controlling the spread of the unknown and unseen enemy of the people. Anxious ourselves, we collected dead bodies countrywide at the time when no one wanted to come near dead bodies of loved ones, we did care for our fellow citizens. Thank you, the people of Eswatini and teams of first responders. Nene begunene, kusetante nte sive kuti imi mango inga kini kukampunzi eza emini. Sive sarangwane. Nebandu la bakete kutala eswati, abapila ngekukhululeka nekuthi kubete lo nyatele lunge lo la labanya eka mende kufuna lunge lo lake. Seve asikumbu leguti, emapo isa boma age na boba abila batinigele kwenta skrinse oguti. Wonge umundu lene mbasa yake inga tegele wa pansi ngulo munye. Wonge umundu agasale ngekutula na nga pande kukwe sabati ngele tingatiwa. Ema poisa ngekulanzela ngekushikile la umteto ati. Ingo ya mundu aibenga yake umundu. Sive asichinge suwabambise spinde suwasegele ema poisa M17 wawo. Gute ema lungelo aso sive. Osuma biznesi ganyene bandu laba sebendago anganya telegi. Kona age imimango ita uwaka. Nema kaya akulise bandu anangaso sandalesi ya emlonyeni. Ema poisa na aso sive. Aba sebente ngebushe lwane. Nange kubambisa na gulua nebukala netingo titem kwaka. Let's be there, Sene Mugele, Sibu Selena, Olo Sanza, Agus Vulela, it's five minutes before seven. Let's cut this, Rabuga, Simo, Semu Kwako, Olo Mtla Ekseni. Let's be there, Sergeant Gule, Olo Mtla Ekseni, Nga Begu, Uhambe Gaganjani, Emi Kwako, Eni Live. Angu Vusele, Tombeni, Ni Vusele, Umbuge, Lua Lulu Sheno. Sifuga, Semu Selu, Turu, Sintena, Mtla Sibidi. Kuya Bona Gala, Gusa, Unemba, Nalia, Pagamis. Nago, Kensi, Ya, Ukutata, Kupasha, Ele, Gusim. Afrika pele kulanze la tona timbu na kubona gala ema potolu na maningi emi kwa tonye elize ayafuga ayapuya nge manda esi si au shayri liso la kia liba nge kalpile nga sasa nge skatu ganti eka tetelope nge kudu la semba pane nga tia tiba nge tina pake nge wasa spedle na nge mge kakia ati sebendi genya lwe kuseni nge kulanze lana genja luna to tiba nge tina pake tube ya mangwa nene nga nge to tiba nge leto ati sebendi nge lwe kuseni nga nge mpote nge kudu nge kudu nge suwa kona emba mane Upege la pae tube ngwe nya la pago mati umando mage kuma kolo kolo. Solo ge slasha se tulebe zele si se te yunga nye mkwa kwa kwa amba. Legu miyope la e-driving lane. Solo skona la po pansa leso stango. 
le sende ke futhi ke umgwaqo unciphe ilinge lesimotolo ya usebenzisa ke naya i driving lane noma ke i passing lane nalapho sithinje awo bashayile abaqaphele sibili basasonzela kule yo ngcingwana leyo kantsi ke nawuphuma khona edilobeni elikhulu lasembabane ubheka khona lapha indasi kumathapha noma ke khona lapha indasi kamanzini kune tikachana nje lapho kunene kubonakala kwakhiwa wona nje umgwaqo noma ke kulungiswa wona umgwaqo lesithi nje awo bashayile bekunene abashayile ngalokhulu kucophelela basati bona leto timphawu leto kantsi lapha kamanzini nawusuka khona emhlaleni ungena khona lapha kakhoza etibana nje umgwaqo umshisiwe ke umgwaqo lapho ulandzela ngokuthi bekulungiswa lona litiyela ku driving lane lekwenda ke kuthi ke kwanyalo bashayile basebenzise nange umdlila longase kudla kepha ke siyakholwa ukuthi masinyane siyawuvulelwa lendlela sihambe ngendlela ledayelekile kanti kuthi utibane lesikhona lapha kamanzini lapha kakhoza athi sebenzi nyale ekuseni sithinje nakhona abashayile abakhumbule ukuthi nawe uyakumahlangana nendlela ikakhulu kahle sindawo le tiyawuphithisela njengaletho sibekekile ukuthi sime niketa ndeke wona emathuba kanti nepitala dike letinye ngemadolobheni ethu solo tivaliwe kulandzela ukuthi imigwaqo iyalungiswa siniketiwe ke sindlela lesingathi sebenzisa kwesikhashana kusalungiswa ke leyo megwaqo leyo ngala mafishana nje ke ngiyawucela nje umzuzu lo wotshwana sengikhude nangumoya kubashayeli ikakhulu kahle sindaweni lapho kusetshelwa khona noma ke kulungiswa wona umgwaqo ukuthi phela indzawo yaze yabaleleka lapho silungisa khona umgwaqo wahamba leto thimola lesimotolo lesisebenza kokule umgwaqo loyo akukabhekeki ukuthi bashayile bayobese baphambana naleto timphawu lesibekiwe lapho sebayawuhamba etulu lapho kwaphiwa khona lokho kungayidala ingodi kuphize futhi kulimade nabo labo labasebenza khona emgwaqweni nokuthi ke bashayile asibakhumbude sibakhusate lokho ukuthi emgwaqweni kuyabeketelelwana lapho kwaphiwa khona umgwaqo yebo iyawuba khona bele ikhonje shit kepha ke lokho akusho ukuthi nje sathi yawuhamba nje ngekuthanda kwethu sikuphule timotolo emgwaqweni lomkhulu tiphambane nato timotolo lokho uyawubanga tingodi futhi ukushayela ngekude deng lobukhulu sibili siyasikhusata nje sive kuthawe kunene asibeketele niketa nemathuba laphephile nalawe bangiwona lasemthethweni silandzelane ngesigaba kuyaba nje ngumzuzwana noma sikhasana nje lesiyabangilesa lesincane kakhulu kunekho ukuthi singabonakala sesidala iconfusion nekhonje sile ngakadzingeki lapho kwakhe kakhona ngebo ngokukhulu thombeni ngimthithelela ngalelihle ngisaqhubeka nemsebenti wenu ndasa sive semaswati Sparkle is a gentle colleague who's negative a long big one minute before seven as well as the magazine space has said in the budget for this billing.